Hi, today I want to tell you about Life of Fred math curriculum. I wish somebody would have told me about the Life of Fred like five years ago when I started homeschooling and did tons of research on math curriculum and over the years I've bought probably five different ones with great reviews and they haven't worked for my family. So this year I didn't even buy math curriculum because it was a source of hopelessness for me. And that's actually something that's kind of cool about homeschooling is if something's not working, you have the freedom to put it on the back burner for a little bit while you figure it out. So that's what I did with math. And lo and behold, my amazing mother had read on a homeschool group about Life of Fred and she said, hey, I'm just gonna send you the first of the series and you can see how it works for your kids. So it came a couple weeks ago, we've been doing it for two weeks and it's awesome. I wish I would have done it sooner. So what is Life of Fred? It is a narrative-based math curriculum that follows five-year-old Fred through his journey as a professor at Kittens University. So it's super funny, super engaging, it's kind of quirky, and my kids loved it, and I love it. It's lots of fun. So you'll see right away um, on the first page, chapter one, Fred has to be somewhere. It's five o'clock, he has to be somewhere at seven o'clock. and. It tells the story of him figuring out when he needs to leave to get somewhere on time. And of course, he needs math to do that. And for all of us who have asked at some point in our lives regarding math, when am I ever gonna use this? You see Fred just living life using math. So it's awesome. And it goes all the way up to calculus, which just makes me super curious what happens to Fred in calculus. I don't know when people use calculus, but I, I, I'm intrigued. This is a great book. On, um, I look forward to buying the other ones in the series and, and working through them. Obviously, this is an early review because we just started, but as far as the, what is this, apples, it's it's great and my kids love it. It's a little over, um, it's, it's, it's kind of like kindergarten and my kids aren't in kindergarten anymore. They're older. But um, anyway, it's a good review and I wanted to start at the beginning. So... Um, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about math and how it's not my thing. Math is hard for me. And I found myself a couple years ago trying to teach place value to my first grader. And it was just like way over my head. And the reason is we were using a curriculum that had lots of gimmicks. And it was supposed to like help kids retain information. But it was really hard for me to wrap my head around things like that. I'm just not... Um, that kind of learner. And so we have done, well, we've done math that we've done like a Charlotte Mason workbook. Um, we've done math that like came with other curriculums that we've used that were like the all um, encompassing curriculum. And it was just, it was hard. And my kids got it to a certain extent because they're good at math. But I was looking for something that we could kind of work through. And um, so far, Life of Fred has been great for that. But let me tell you what happened in years past when I couldn't figure it out. I immediately felt like a failure and and I felt like I didn't have what it I don't have what it takes to teach to teach my kids math and then all of a sudden that cycles into why am I even homeschooling this is so hard I don't have what it takes I'm not made to do this I can't even teach place value and and right away I begin um, it's kind of like a cycle of defeat. It's just like you sink lower and you start seeing like, oh, well, actually my child's not reading where they're supposed to. And, and oh my goodness, we didn't homeschool this day because we had like 5,000 errands and, and then I meant to make up for it on this day and I didn't. And, you know, it's just so easy to go to those places in homeschooling because let's face it, I don't think any of us start homeschooling with this idea that we are totally adequate. You know, it, it's hard to do. And all of this kind of came to a head in my life last uh, year and year before last because I was pregnant and somebody that I loved very much was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And so I was flying back to a different state like every couple months in order to process this with my family and be in the hospital and, and sit with a dying person. And it was so painful. And then I have homeschooling that I still have to get done. And I mean, there were like three months that I didn't homeschool my kids and I felt like such a failure. I even looked into school and, and filled out applications and I was just like ready to put my kids in because I didn't feel like I had what it, what it took. So um, long story short, God got a hold of me and I, I love Jesus and, and I wouldn't even homeschool if I didn't feel called to it. 
Um, and, and what God said is you are not a failure and what you do doesn't make you who you are. At the end of the day, I am a child of God. I'm loved. I have value. Even if you're not a believer, like you are a human, you have breath in your lungs and you matter. And even if the homeschool table doesn't look the way you want it to, you still matter and you still have value. And the minute that you enter that cycle of defeat and begin feeling like a failure, you run out of options because you are the problem and you've you've done everything you know to do, right? Like you love your kids. You're already sacrificing to be home with them and to homeschool them and you've done everything. And so when you're a failure and you start, when you feel like a failure and you start ruminating on that, you run out of options. So here's what I wanna propose. And it's something that's helped me as I walked through grief and walked through pregnancy and I'm still trying to school my kids. It's that you are not a failure, you matter. Okay, and you have options. Maybe your option is to put your kids in school, but you still have options. Lots of times you just need a new curriculum or you need a new schedule. I've shared on other videos. We don't do Mondays because we were just struggling getting back into grooves on Mondays. My husband's off work. So now we don't school on Mondays and it works way better for us. Also, in terms of curriculum, we've changed our curriculum almost every single year. This year we're doing fun schooling. It's been awesome. I honestly feel like it's like the curriculum I've been looking for all along. Um, Life of Fred, it's working for us, but it took me like five years to find some of this stuff. And so don't give up, don't give up. You're not a failure. You probably just need to explore your options. So don't go to that dark place. Don't go to that cycle of defeat. Um, open, open up the door to the possibilities. There's so much in homeschooling. You have so much freedom. So I just wanted to encourage you with that that I know what it feels like. I know how it feels when that grandma who hates homeschooling tells your child to read a book and they can't do it. It's crushing, but you're not a failure. And that is the last thing I wanna say about homeschooling is there's so much grace um, for the student. It's kinda like how um, I saw this meme the other day. It's like, one does not simply know what grade a homeschooler is in because right, our kids, learn, um, they learn like in different seasons, they learn in different things. Sometimes this thing they've been working at forever will suddenly click and they've got it. And I've seen that with all of my kids time and time again, where it felt like, oh, they're so far behind. And then it's tempting to be like, I'm failing them. But then they get it. They get it because we keep working on it and we keep just chipping away. And then they enter like this new growth pattern. They grow up and they get it. And so... You are not a failure. You can do this. You have what it takes. Don't give up. If something's not working, explore the possibilities. What else?